Okay, guys, I'm going to do a couple questions from the review. Um, not too many to kind of keep this short, but there's a few that I want to make sure that you've seen before the test day. So taking a look at this question, I'm on page two of the review. This is question number 14. It asks us to find the X and Y intercept. So I just want to make sure that we do that one more time in class or before the test, I should say. So X and Y intercepts really quickly to review X intercepts. Right, all have something in common, which is a zero for the y coordinate, and y intercepts have something similar, which is a zero for the x coordinate. Um, with these, I kind of like to make a little table sometimes, so I'm going to show you this little table. And it's nothing more than putting these two things into the table. So for the x intercept, we know that there's a zero for the y, and for the y intercept, there's a zero for the x. So all I have to do is go and find the x coordinate for the x-intercept and the y-coordinate for the y-intercept. So to do that, what we're doing is we're using this concept of this zero that we know is part of the coordinate. So for the x-intercept, what we're going to do is we're going to plug zero in here for y, which if you could see my finger on the screen, you would see this whole thing drop out because 12 times zero, or negative 12 times zero, is zero. So it drops out. So what we're left with is 6x equals 24. And if we go ahead and divide by 6 on both sides, we find out that the x-coordinate is 4. So we get to plug that in. So we've already got one of our intercepts there. All right, so I'm going to erase this so that you can see me do my work there. I don't have a lot of room, obviously. Now I'm going to take this 0, which is the x-coordinate. I'm going to plug it in here. 6 times 0 is 0, so that whole thing drops out. So I find out that negative 12y equals 24. Divide by negative 12. And I find out that x is equal to negative 2. So the y-intercept is negative 2. So there's your answer. You can put it as a point if you want. You can put them in here, 4, negative 2. You can say x equals 4. You can say y equals negative 2. I'm fine with either, as long as you're understood, or I understand what you're finding there. All right, so the next question I want to do is on page 3 of the review, which is a graphing one. Um, again, I'm going to just highlight really quickly 25 and 26. Make sure you're clear on which one is horizontal um, and which one's vertical. So if it has y equals and it says it's a linear equation and it asks you to graph it, you know that that means more than an y-intercept or a coordinate point or anything else. You know that it means that you have to graph a horizontal line. How do you remember that? Well, if it's y equals, it must go through the y-axis at whatever number they're giving you. And if it's x equals, it must go through the x-axis at whatever number they're giving you. All right, so on to 24. It asks us to graph that. This is in standard form. You can graph from standard form. We just saw that we could do the intercepts. So if I'm doing the intercepts, I'm going to find the x-intercept. So I'm going to get 2x equals 10. That's super simple to solve. Some of you will do that in your head. The y or the x-coordinate for the x-intercept is 5. So I'm going to go to 5, 0. I'm going to make a point. That's pretty quick and easy. All right, so I'm going to race again. This time we're going to make the x-coordinate drop out because we're going to find the y-intercept. So I find out that negative 4y equals 10. Maybe not as pretty, but it still works. And you're like, well, Mr. Hallam, how do I graph negative 10 fourths? Well, at this scenario, you'll probably reduce it, and you find out that it's negative 5 halves. And then you're going to change that into negative 2.5. And you're like, Mr. Hallam, no decimals. And I said, well, there's few exceptions. Um, especially if we're graphing. So it's easier to graph negative 2.5 than it is negative 5 halves. Same thing, you're going to estimate either way to put it on the graph. So there's your, your x-coordinate, right? Um, oh, I think I reversed that, didn't I? I found the x-intercept, and that's the y-intercept. No, I'm good. And you draw a line through there. Okay, so it's really quick and easy to graph with standard form. You will be asked to graph in all forms on this test, so be ready to graph any of these. We didn't highlight a lot of it, but I have faith that you guys are pretty good about it. All right, and the last question that I want to do is on the last page of the review. So here it is. Um, again, all these answers are posted in the OneNote. I made them live for you. This question here usually stumps kids all year. Um, they just can't get the concept of going through uh, a line, writing a line that's parallel or perpendicular to something and that goes through a particular point. But if you're super smart, you're paying attention, you'll notice it doesn't say what form. And if it doesn't say what form, our favorite form to write into with any random point, and you can see that 8, negative 2 is a random point, is point slope form. Why? Because all you need is a slope and a random point. So there's our form that we're going to attempt to write into. But you'll notice that we're in standard form. 
This one over here, kind of nice. There's a slope right there, right? One, that one's super easy over here because it's already in slope intercept form. So we can see slope, it makes it really easy. This one, we have to change the standard form to some other form. Um, can't change the point slope form, so that would be nice if we could, but the only other form we can change to is slope intercept. So we are gonna change it to slope intercept. The reason for that is so we can see what the slope is, okay? Um, if you wanted to attack this an entirely different way and you're thinking outside of the box, you could graph this with the intercepts and then attempt to get the slope. So you might graph it, see the line, and then try to calculate the slope from that, rise over run, that's a possibility. Um, if you can use your calculator, you would put in your calculator and you could get slope that way from maybe the table. Those would be alternate methods, perfectly viable. I don't go over them in class, but those are logical progression ones, ones you'd figure out on your own. So let's change the form. That's kind of the way I set everything up for. So we're going to go ahead and take 4x minus 2y equals 9. I need to isolate the y, so I'm moving 4x over first. So I get negative 2y equals negative 4x plus 9. Now I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. And I kind of get an ugly fraction there, but it will be okay. Negative 4, or negative and negative make a positive, so I got 4 halves, which makes 2x plus 9 halves. You're like, ew, fraction, but hey, the best part about this is all we need is that slope, right? We need a parallel slope, which we remember or recall is the same slope, right? Different y-intercepts between our equation. When we write our equation, it'll work out. And then we perpendicular slope, right? Um, there's the lines for it. Perpendicular slope means we flip it and we make it negative or change its sign, shall I say. So we need to use those two, plug them into our point slope form here, right? Here's your x coordinate, there's your y coordinate or x1, y1. So let's go ahead and do that. It doesn't say change its form, so we're just going to leave it in standard form. We're going to be super smart about it. So y minus my y coordinate looks negative, so it's going to become positive in the equation. Um, equals my slope, which is the same, which is 2 times the quantity of x minus my x coordinate, which is 8. It looks positive, so it should look negative here. Done. I don't need to change it to slope intercept form. I don't need to change it to standard form. Could you be asked that on the quiz? It's a possibility. But if I don't do that, be done with it. Not too bad. All right, so perpendicular. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the exact same point. The only thing I'm going to change is the slope. There we go. I don't even have to think twice about that. All done. All right, so there's a couple quick questions. If there's any other questions that I didn't do on here that you need to ask, make sure you post them in the community or come early tomorrow morning. All right, we'll see you in class for the test. Good luck.